What's up everyone, it's Bryce from LaneChain, and in this video we're introducing Open Canvas, which is a new UX we built for um, using LLMs to generate any sort of creative writing content or code with memory included. So, as you can see right here, I send in a message, it moves my chat window over to the left, and then I get this nice markdown editor appearing on the right. Here, I can do cool things like highlight specific text, and then send a request which will apply only to that specific text. So I can say, change, change to Amazon, I hit submit, and as you can see, it updated only that specific text to Amazon. I can also use the chat window to paste in an entirely new request saying, write me a simple Python script to take a web page URL, scrapes it and returns its contents. And as you can see, it understood that I asked for a Python script. Um, so it changed the editor on the right to then render Python um, and then also generated that text. I can also do what I did before where I can highlight some text. And I can say, rename to get page contents. Hit submit, and as you can see, it's going to update only the specific highlighted text to what I requested. I can also go back and select my original text here, and then render that, or once again, go back to this Python text. As you can see in the top right, I also have this reflections button. What this essentially does is it's performing a reflection agent on all of my um, generated artifacts, which is what they were calling this content on the right, and my chat window. And it's taking that and it's using an LLM to uh, generate these style guidelines and um, content rules and memories about me to then include in future generations. So if I click on this and I say search for reflections, we can see it generated a handful of reflections about me on my style um, and then content like my name, uh, where I work and so on. So these will persist across sessions. I can do cool things like open up a new chat and I can just say, what's my name, occupation and one thing I dislike. As you can see, we're in an entirely new chat, so this is not going to have access to any of the chat history or artifacts we've previously generated. But since it has access to those reflections in memory, it knows my name is Brace. I am an AI engineer at Amazon um, because I updated that text to say Amazon. And I strongly dislike traffic during my morning commute, which is what I asked it to write the um, uh, blog post about in the initial question. So now that we have a high level idea as to what this app does, let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about the architecture and how it's actually built. So as you can see from our nodes that are automatically generated, we have a few main um, areas which can route to. So the generate path node is always called as the first node, and this is going to generate the path that our graph will take uh, based on some inputs, which can either be some deterministic inputs, which we'll get to in a little bit, or it, sometimes we'll use an LLM to then decide what node to route to. Um, if it wants to do anything with the artifacts, you see we have five different nodes for artifacts. We have a rewrite artifact update artifact, generate artifact, and these two around the different theme. This is for rewriting the artifact text theme, and this is for rewriting artifact code theme. Um, and these are triggered if you use any of the quick actions, which we didn't actually talk about in the intro, but we can look at that right now. So if we go here and we ask it to write me a poem about dogs, keep it very short, we see it's going to write me a nice little poem right here. And then in the bottom right, I get this quick action bar. So if I click on this, you can see that we have four different options. This is translate. I can translate to any of these languages. I can also change the reading level. So I can make it um, you know, like a PhD reading level. I can make it a child. And then we also have this fun one for making it sound like a pirate. I can change the length so I can make it longest, shortest, short, and so on. And we can do this, ready? So I'll say make it longest. And what it's going to do is it's going to pass in this field um, in my state called artifact length. And then in my initial generate path node, it's going to see the artifact length is populated. Um, and then it's going to route it to the rewrite artifact theme node. It does this for any of the state fields which correspond with the quick actions for text. And that would be uh, language, artifact length, regenerate with emojis, or reading level. So if any of these state fields are populated, we know that a user used one of the quick actions and we need to route to art rewrite artifact theme. The same goes for rewrite code artifact theme. Um, but those have the quick actions of adding comments, adding logs, port to a different programming language, or fix bugs. And if any of those are passed in, we know we want to rewrite code artifact theme. What these two nodes do is they're pretty similar. What they do is they have a, a unique prompt for each quick action you could take. And based on the populated quick action in the state, um, it has a switch case and then uses that specific prompt. So for rewriting like a pirate, the prompt is just saying, you know, take this artifact and rewrite it sound like a pirate. If you're using the code quick action and say you wanted to port it to uh, PHP, it's going to say, given this code, port it to PHP. Um, and the prompts are a little more detailed than that, but that is the overall theme. 
if you didn't populate any, or if you didn't use any of the quick actions, then we also have the ability to highlight, which we did see in the input. So if I were to highlight this and say uppercase and send it, it's going to know that I highlighted this text because that's going to be populated inside of the highlighted field here. And what this does is it basically just takes the start index and the end index of the highlighted text, adds that to the state, sends it to the LLM, and the LLM says, okay, this highlighted state field is populated. That means that I know I need to route to the update artifact node. And this node is specific for updating the highlighted text. Um, and it's just some other prompting around saying, okay, given this specific highlighted text and then some context before and after, because the LLM needs to know more context than just what you highlighted, um, do what the user asks. And it's prompted um, very specifically to only highlight what is updated. And those are the three deterministic routes that generate path can use. If none of those state fields are populated, then we can either generate an entirely new artifact or rewrite the artifact and finally respond to query. So generating and rewriting the artifact are exactly what they sound like. If I say, write me a Python script for logging hello world, and I submit that, it's going to know that I want to generate a new artifact um, because that's clearly asking for a new request. I can also say something like wrap it in a function and it's going to pass this uh, current artifact and then also some context like my input and some previous chat messages to an LLM. The LLM is going to say, okay, we probably want to rewrite the artifact. So then it's going to rewrite the artifact. And then finally, I can also just ask my chat window some simple requests like, you know, how are you? I send that and it's just going to reply here um, and it's not going to actually update the artifact. And that's because the LLM knows we don't need to touch any artifacts. We just need to respond to query. So after either updating artifact, um, we will then generate a follow-up, and that's what these messages are right here. These are the follow-ups that are generating, gen generated. After that, we're going to reflect, and this is what generates the um, memories that are kept in our short shared store, so that in future generations, the LLM has context into you know who I am, what my name is, um, anything else I've told it, and also some style guidelines. Um, like after I said uh, wrap it in a function, it's probably going to add a style guideline saying for writing code, wrap it, wrap your code in a function. Um, and then if it either updated an artifact or responded to a query, it'll always go to clean state. And that's because we have all these different state fields, which only really matter for um, individual requests, right? So highlighted or language or artifact length, those are all like quick actions or things which don't need to persist the next thread. So clean state just removes those from the, um, the current state fields so that in my next request, the LM doesn't think I'm highlighting stuff. So we also have the ability to click on this icon right here. It's going to take us to the Langsmith trace. Uh, this is populated in every single request you ask. You can always inspect exactly what's going on under the hood um, and get an insight into you know, why the LM generated some text or how it generated that. If we click here, we see that I clicked on um, this function for wrapped in a function, which means that the LM is going to rewrite the artifact, which is that node we just saw. If we look at the prompt, we can see that it's passed in the current artifact and then also some reflections, which are the user facts and then style guidelines uh, that it generated after the fact using this reflect node. This reflect node is essentially calling an entirely different agent, this reflection agent. Super simple, it just has one node reflect and it's passed in the current artifact in the chat history. I um, mean, there's some prompting saying, you know, here are all the current uh, re reflections and facts that you generate about the user. Here's the current artifact, here are some messages uh, regenerate all of them, combine some you know, duplicates, um, and then it's going to update our shared store to then persist those values in the next generation so that our LLM always has context about who we are. We can see that's triggered here. Um, it's basically just calling a subgraph using the Langgraph SDK to then invoke that. Um, and then we're also passing in some fields to say, you know, if you get duplicate requests, cancel the original and then only use the most recent, and then also wait. I think I set it to 30 seconds so that we're not just reflecting on every single request because um, that would get pretty pricey if the user is going back and forth with the LLM. So what it does is it delays 30 seconds, and if there have been no requests um, for 30 seconds, it goes and it reflects. We can see all those reflections here, and then the UI will also let us clear these reflections so that we can start fresh. Speaking of starting fresh, if I'm here and I don't want to start with a chat window, right? Let's say I'm writing some code in my IDE and I want to use uh, Open Canvas to iterate on it. I can select this quick start code. Um, I can do the same for text. If I select quick start code, I just need to specify a language like TypeScript. And then it opens up a brand new, totally clean um, code editor. 
and then a chat window on the left. And then I can paste in some code here, right? Or I can just modify this. So I can, let's say I modify it to say, very simple, you know, import React from React. Our LLM is going to always be past this because it's the current artifact we're viewing. So I can then say, what I just write in my code window, since this artifact is past the LLM, it knows exactly what I've been writing. So it'll always have context into exactly what you're editing. I can also close this, you know, reopen it. Um, so if I had multiple ones, like I said, write me a poem, it's going to generate an entirely new um, uh, markdown editor right here. And then I can close this out, of course, and go back to my code or go back to my poem. We can now see my reflections. I think they have been generated for this. Okay, no, and we need some more time, um, but in a few seconds, it'll generate some reflections um, about, you know, this user writes in React and whatnot. So now that we know how it works at a high level, let's take a look at some code and see exactly how we're doing some of the more complex things. So a lot of this code is kind of uh, redundant where it's just using different prompting techniques to generate uh, different text around your artifacts or code. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at just two of these nodes, which do some cool things uh, like using LLMs to route the uh, path. And that's what we're going to look at first. So we're going to open up the first generate path node. So you can see all the nodes for the main open canvas agent are inside this nodes directory. Um, and they're all named the same, or the file names all have the same as the function name. So you can, as you can see here, we have these three if statements, and these are the deterministic routes I was talking about in the beginning. The first is highlighted. So of course, if you've passed in this highlighted state field, we know the user is highlighted text, and we're going to want to route to the update artifact node, which only handles um, updating highlighted text. Next, if you pass in any of these state fields around the text quick actions, which are changing the language, changing the artifact length, regenerating with emojis, or changing the reading level, we know we want to reroute re to the rewrite artifact theme node. And then finally, we have the same for the code quick actions, which are add comments, add logs, port language, and fix bugs. And those will of course go to the rewrite code artifact theme. So you can see we're always populating this next state field. And that's because generate path will always route to this route node conditional edge. And this route node conditional edge just says if state.next is false, throw an error, this should never be the case. And if not, we use the send class to then kick off the next node dynamically, um, passing in a field of the node, which is the next uh, state field, and then the current state. We also have this clean state um, node here, which as we can see, will always run before the end. And that just has these default inputs um, that clears all of these states that should not persist to the next um, iteration in the graph, like next, you know, highlighted, uh, fixed bugs, and so on. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about our generate path deterministic routes, we can scroll down and we can see how we're using LLMs to dynamically route it based on an input query. The first thing we do is we extract the selected artifact. We use the selected artifact ID if it's populated, and that's populated when the user you know, has selected an artifact like this. Um, but let's say they don't have an artifact selected. In that case, we just take the last artifact in the list, um, which is going to be the most recently generated or updated artifact. After that, we get a list containing all of the other artifacts that are not the generated ones, because we want to include those in the context of the, for the LLM. And then we format our prompt. So we have this route qu query prompt, which is pretty long, and it's just saying you're an assistant, you're tasked with routing the user's query, um, and then we give it some context about the different options it can choose. We give it the recent messages in the chat history, and for this, we just take the most recent three messages and then format them into a nice string. We also give it the current artifact, um, or sorry, we have all of the artifacts in the history the user has generated, um, and we're using this uh, format artifacts util, which essentially just takes 500 characters because the LLM typically will not need the entire artifact for this generation. Like say you're asking to write a blog post and you have you know five different blogs in your history, you don't want the LLM to be having you know, like 30 paragraphs in the context, it doesn't need that. And then finally, we end it with the selected artifacts. The LLM knows um, exactly what artifact you are looking at right now if you are looking at artifact um, so that it can use that as proper context for routing your query. Once we populate all that, we use GPT-40 Mini uh, for a small LLM, and then we bind a tool using with structured output that has two fields. Uh, the route, and that's either update artifact, respond to query, or generate artifact. And we talked about what those do in the beginning. And then we have artifact ID. 
Uh, and the LLM should populate this if it wants to update the artifact. Um, and this format artifacts util function will add the ID in context. So the LLM knows exactly what artifact to populate the ID for. After that, we invoke the model. Once again, we're using a small model, so it runs quickly and we can quickly route to the next node. And then we say, if the route is update artifact, um, the update artifact node name is actually already taken by the highlight um, or the node which updates the highlighted text. So we just uh, update that to the rewrite artifact node, and that's the name of the node which will rewrite the entire artifact. And then also making sure the selected artifact ID is populated with whatever artifact ID the LLM um, used, or sorry, included in the generation. If not, then it will either be respond to query or generate artifact, and we just pass that via the next field. And then of course, as we saw before, this goes to the route node, and it will use the send class to then invoke that next node. So now that we've talked about the initial router, let's go into um, how we're actually generating these reflections and storing them in our shared store. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to open up the reflection directory and then the index.ts file. This is also relatively simple. What we're doing is we're extracting the store, which is a new API we added in the LangGraph API from the config. And we're using this new type we added in LangGraph called LangGraph runnable config. And it's just adding the store field to the normal runnable config you're probably familiar with if you've used LangGraph or LangChain. This util function just verifies it's in the store. Um, and if you're using LangGraph Studio or LangGraph Cloud to deploy or develop your application, you will always have a store included. And then it gets the memories from the store or the reflections. In order to do this, we have a namespace where these reflections are stored and they're namespaced by memories and then the current assistant, assistant ID. Once again, if you're using LangGraph Cloud or LangGraph Studio, you will always have an assistant ID populated. After that, we have a key, which is the reflection key. Um, this has to be a unique key uh, in our store in order to store these specific reflections uh, in the database. We then call store.get and we get the memories back. Then if memories are populated, we format them into a nice string or we say no reflections found. We then define the tool schema for generating new reflections where we have two different fields, style rules and content rules. As you saw in the dialogue I opened up in the UI, we had two sections for style rules and content rules. And these break out things like, you know, the user likes his functions or his code wrapped in functions. Um, and that would be stored in these style rules. And then for content rules, it would be things like the user's name is Brace. After that, we use Claude 3.5 Sonnet uh, because we want a powerful model that is able to perform these somewhat complex reasoning tasks and it's running in the background, so we don't need to worry about speed. We then bind the schema to it and give it a name of generate reflections. And then we have this, uh, another long prompt, which of course you can look at in the uh, open source repository, but this is just uh, giving some prompting around, here's all of the um, reflections you've already generated. Here's the chat history in this uh, conversation. And then also here's the current artifact the user is looking at. Given all this, regenerate all of these reflections. And then once we get the result of this, we create this new mem new memories or new reflections object containing the new style rules and content rules, and then call store.put using the same namespace and same key. And that's going to replace the values that were previously in our store with these new values so that um, they will be included in all future generations. So that is the high level um, and then architecture implementation as to how we built Open Canvas which is somewhat inspired from OpenAI's Open Canvas, uh, but we do different things like adding memory um, and then some other nice UX features, which we believe to give it a uh, better interaction. Of course, it's open source. And if you want to contribute, we have a few different issues here uh, with requests that we would like to add, like adding some evals for memory so that the memories can be uh, better. Uh, we want better memory prompting and whatnot, and then some updates to the Markdown editor. Um, so I hope to see you all interact with this repo, um, fork it, improve it yourself or contribute back to it. Um, and of course, it's going to be deployed for free in production. So if you want to interact with it, uh, go ahead. I'll see you all in the next video.